Hi guys and welcome to another EM coaching video. In this video we will be talking about the serve from a biomechanical point of view and its key elements. We have a lot of things to talk about so let's get started. So the first thing that we do as coaches when we start analyzing any serve is to look at it as a whole, as a total. We identify any issues and further we break it down into small mechanical features that we, we can analyze in depth. So this is exactly what we're going to do today with this video. We're going to break it down in small pieces so that you can all understand what exactly are the requirements and you can also appreciate the effort and everything that those athletes do out there. So first and foremost, we look at the preparation. So let's jump right into analyzing some of the pro players technique. So one of the first thing that we'll be looking at is the grip. And most importantly, we're looking for a continental grip with the Eastern forehand grip being considered okay for the intermediate and beginner players. We have seen a tendency over the past years of top players using a grip between the Eastern forehand and the Continental for power purposes. Next up, we will be analyzing the type of stance the players use, more specifically what type of leg drive will they have. We have the foot up technique and we have the foot back technique. Players using a foot back technique are likely to generate more horizontal momentum than players using a foot up technique. On the contrary, the foot up technique may create greater vertical momentum, which may in turn facilitate players impacting the ball at greater heights. With both types of stances, players will be able to generate considerable amount of ground reaction force. Players using the foot back technique will however have a bit more balance, especially in the developing stages of their game. In terms of backswing, we can notice the full backswing and the abbreviated backswing. In terms of effectiveness, both types of swings produce the same type of shoulder torque. Let's move on to talking about the backswing. First on our list will be to analyze the ball toss and looking at the arm movement. We continue by looking at the knee flexion and uh, we are looking at approximate of 100 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees. When we look at the knee flexion we are analyzing to see if there is uh, not enough or maybe too much knee bend. In terms of racket rotation and its position in relation to the shoulder, we Mostly like, as a general rule, we'd like to have the racket positioned away from the body such that the shoulder internal rotator muscles are on stretch. Moving on, we're looking to analyze the hip and the trunk rotation. And in this phase, we would like the players to create a separation angle of about 20 degrees between the shoulders and the hips. We also analyze the coordination of the two arms, continuous simple action between the two arms that will create rhythm and allow the player to use all of his power. During the forward swing there are a lot of interesting things happening so that's why we're going to be dedicating a bit more time to it. The primary source of power for an advanced server is found in the leg action. It is with this action that the source of power is transferred through the link system. The leg drive in the serve is responsible for increasing the velocity of the hip. An advanced player will transfer the power generated by the knees to the trunk through the hips. The hip rotation will drive the shoulder up and out, which will force the racket even further down the back of the server. At this point, the trunk rotates approximately 90 degrees to position the body for impact. The right shoulder, or the dominant shoulder let's say, will follow an almost vertical path over the front shoulder or the left shoulder if you're a right player to permit appropriate twist and forward flexion of the trunk. This action is also known as shoulder over shoulder. The forearm at this point is almost parallel to the ground, to the court, which will place the anterior shoulder muscles on stretch. 
The upper arm elevation will cause the elbow to rapidly extend upwards to position the racket for impact and the pronation of the forearm and hand around the elbow will occur at this point as well. The wrist flexion is the final stage in the chain of links that will transfer power into the shot. Next up in the analysis we will be talking about the impact position. At this point we also look for the body to be fully extended at contact with the trunk slightly flexed so that it reduces the stress and the workload on the shoulder and to create angular momentum as well. Prior to and after contact we're also looking for the racket to be misaligned in regards to the forearm. In regards to the racket trajectory as you can see in this example we're looking for an up, forward and lateral trajectory. Lastly, in this analysis, we'll be looking at the follow-through. Landing will occur on the front foot due to the shoulder-over-shoulder -shoulder rotation. This landing position is also called arabesque. Internal rotation and pronation continues even after impact in order to decelerate the racket and to allow for the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist to dissipate the energy that they produced. At this point, the body starts to recover its balance and it's ready to recover as well its position for the next shot. There are many other things that we could be talking about in this video, but thank you for watching for now. If you liked it, please make sure you subscribe and you comment below for your chance to win a free biomechanical analysis of your serve.